This newborn baby is a heroin addict. Her legs twitch uncontrollably, and she will cry continuously. She is in pain. She is suffering from heroin withdrawal. In one year alone, over 24,000 babies were born dependent on drugs in America. In Canada, Sherry Kent shared this photo on Facebook. Her son Michael was only 22 when he suffered a fatal drug overdose. His mother was forced to watch her son die. Even in Singapore, innocent victims of drug addiction suffer. Noi Noi, only three years old, was strangled to death by her stepfather in a drug-fueled rage and then dumped under an overhead bridge. She lay there for three days before the police found her body. Those who oppose strong deterrence against drug abuse often say that addiction is a victimless crime. That is a lie. The innocent victims of drug addiction are all around us. They are the mothers and fathers, wives and husbands, babies and children of the drug addicts themselves. In America, deaths from drug abuse have reached epidemic proportions. 64,000 dead in 2016 alone. How many fathers? How many mothers? How many families broken up by drug abuse? And why is this happening? Many countries are finding it difficult to combat drug addiction. Porous borders are one reason. Poverty and inadequate treatment are another. But by far, the biggest obstacle is a culture of drug taking. When people think that drug abuse is normal, when they accept it and celebrate it, then preventing addiction is next to impossible. In Australia, drug taking has become a normalized part of culture for many young Australians. As a result, they have the world's largest proportion of youth drug use. In Portugal, despite some moderate early successes, decriminalization has led to people normalizing drug abuse. As a result, more young people are abusing substances, with increased use across every class of drug. The countries that support legalization have suffered from decades of rampant drug abuse. Their hospitals cannot cope, their jails are full, and their neighborhoods are under attack. They see decriminalization as the only way out and to prevent further crisis. In Singapore, we have few of those problems. Intravenous drug use is exceptionally rare, and our youth drug rates are the lowest in the world. But we have achieved this through difficult choices and through tough laws against trafficking. Of course, there are those who disagree. But when a trafficker can bring in enough drugs to poison 4,000 people each time, then the danger is stark. We must act to protect the victims of drug abuse. Those who push for leniency call this bloodthirsty. They tug at our heartstrings. They light candles for drug traffickers and call our stance inhumane. But where are the candles for Denise Tan, who jumped seven floors to her death in a drug-fueled psychosis? Where is the vigil for Muhammad Nur Shahrin, the athletic young man who died from an overdose? Where are the candles for Noi Noi? Anti-drug policies are complicated and difficult. Different countries face different drug situations. What works for one country doesn't necessarily work for another. We have found a model that works to keep drugs at bay. It is possible to be tough on traffickers, to be tough on prevention, to be tough on drug abusers, and at the same time help them psychologically, medically, economically without having to feed them with drugs. Show me a model that works better, delivers a better outcome for citizens, and we will consider changing. That cannot be done, then don't ask me to change. We cannot, must not tolerate drug use. Too many lives are at stake. <laughs>